A big week this week, U.S. debt, government shutdown, and inflation. We're going to talk about all of those in this video. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education, and this year at Thanksgiving, I will win the bigger half of the wishbone, and you butternut squash my dreams on this. Those Thanksgiving puns are getting pretty wild. We need to talk about Moody's and the U.S. credit rating. We need to talk about the potential of a government shutdown happening by Friday and also the inflation reports that are coming up for us and what that could mean to the markets. I will tell you later on in this video where you can see how I'm playing this market, how you can get my options course and about the free stocks from Moomoo. In the meantime, into the time machine we go because President Barack Obama, that's because this is from 2011, August the 5th, when S&P downgraded the U.S. credit rating from AAA down to AA+. And why did they do that? There was a political gridlock in Washington over addressing long-term fiscal problems. I would say that, well, that long-term is still going on. We still have long-term fiscal problems. So that could be something that could most definitely still impact the markets to come back around and start to really haunt us that there could be some sort of threat over that medium term, as Moody's had said, as for the reason for changing their outlook from stable to negative in the medium term. So what do we got here? United States came against the backdrop of slowing U.S. economic growth that led to the worst week in the U.S. stock market in nearly two years. So that's something else that we want to pay attention to because right now we know that the GDP numbers most recently for the advanced estimate came in hot. But what we don't know are the full effects of the credit tightening and also the increase to the federal funds rate. So that has yet to play out throughout the rest of this year and throughout 2024. And so we'll see should the Fed happen to end up cutting rates between now and then. And they actually don't anticipate any sort of big resolution on this until 2025, given that we have elections coming up next year, which is pretty crazy. So what well, we got House Republicans pursuing a two-step plan, and they're trying to avoid another spending deadline that could lead to a government shutdown. They're kicking that can or want to kick that can down the road using one bill that would push it out till January the 19th and another one that would take it out until February the 2nd. So that's something that we want to watch for to see if we get any sort of resolution. No resolution could be negatively impacting on the markets. Fitch's credit downgrade we got on August the 1st of 2023. You can see that this is on here and this is as per Fitch ratings themselves. If you want to go ahead and check that out as well. And then most recently from Moody's, Moody's turns negative on US credit rating, draws Washington ire. Ooh, there we go. Large fiscal deficits and a decline in debt affordability. Hello to high treasury yields. And I'll tell you what, trying to service that debt is going to be very troublesome. And that's something that's getting sniffed out by Moody's as a credit agency. They're the last major credit holdout, the last major credit rating ratings agency holding out at AAA, they also moved down to AA+. Plus. That's going to be big for the markets. I don't think that's something that should be ignored. It should highly be paid attention to. This week coming up, consumer inflation expectations. Remember, if they move up, then that can be something that can also push inflation up, that consumer inflation expectations are going to be big on that. If that should draw down, that could be some alleviating upward pressure on the markets as we look at it. And then we have CPI coming out on Tuesday. Again, we want to see low numbers for continued bullishness. Moving on to Wednesday, we have the PPI report coming out. And again, we want to see lower numbers there. Now, I will say that the increase in energy prices throughout the month of October probably will lead to some slightly elevated numbers, could rattle the markets. We're going to have to watch and see. I think the markets are going to be pretty darn worried about things to open up the week. And so I'll give further commentary on that when we go and look at the charts. Let's put the economic calendar back up there for the moment, because on Thursday, we have initial jobless claims and we have a bunch more Fed speeches coming up for us. So we want to pay attention to that as well. And then on Friday, Friday is when we have that deadline coming up for the U.S. government. Are they going to continue to remain open or will we see a government shutdown because there'll be no consensus reach? In any case, the government does need to continue to service its debt. So most likely they'll end up kicking the can down the road. And so people might be like, oh, this is really a non-issue because they'll just keep on delaying things and pushing them back. And so that that in and of itself, I think, could be a wrong answer, at least in light of what Moody's is saying with the outlook being negative, that the government will just continue to go on spending because they need to, so that way they can continue to service their debts. And while well, defaulting would be absolutely horrendous worldwide. So any any fear of defaulting on debt could be a very, very bad thing. So as of right now, I don't necessarily know that that's a, a legitimate fear, but it's definitely something that needs to be paid attention to, needs to be addressed, and needs to be affixed at the governmental level. And so they really do need a policy that really does get things done and restores that full faith that gets everybody back up to that triple A rating that they can't continue the path that they're on. So let's move from there into the markets. 
Let me put that down and we'll bring this up. So here we're looking in through the time machine as well, back to 2011, the week that we got the downgrade coming in from S&P from AAA down to AA+. Plus because of what we had with the poor fiscal policy back then. And the week prior was down about 4%. Then they dropped another 7%. Then they dropped another percent and a half. And then they dropped another 4.5% after that. That was absolutely disgusting to watch that happen. Now, it is noteworthy. As you look at this, this yellow line is the silver lining in this because we came down and tagged it. We came down and tagged it again a few weeks later. But then look and see what happens. As I zoom out on this thing and we look what happens and let me hit the reset chart view. There we go. Let's find 2011 again. There we go. So right here's where we were. And look at the rip that we went on after that. After things sort of were all, all down in the dumps, everything was horrible, awful, and rip up we go. Very super bullish. Now, mind you, I don't think that this is the same circumstance. I do think that we're actually in still a pretty good circumstance. Now, we didn't come off the 200 week, but we did come off the 50 week in this one. And so you can see what happened when we came down, passed through it, hit support, and then ripped right back up. So what we had two weeks ago was almost a 6% gain in the markets, followed by another about a percent and a third in the S&P. Now, if we look at Fitch's credit downgrade, when that happened, that's this red candle that we have right here. This is the week that it happened in. So when we look at this one, that one dropped about 2.2% and then down at about 0.26% uh, and then 2% after that. So that's the fall off that we got across those three candles right there before we finally started turning things around in the following week. So that took about three weeks for that to happen. So we could see significant downward pressure based on everything that's happening this week between the inflation report, between the potential government shutdown, and also digesting what we saw from Friday after the market closed. We'll see if that is something that also adds further downward pressure here. Now, mind you, it is not a credit downgrade. It's just a change in outlook in the medium term to be something that was stable. Now it's negative coming from them. So we're going to have to watch and see what Moody's does. I think it's going to be highly impactful. Let's go to the daily chart on this. There we go. So we actually had a really good week last week. We had a really good week the week before that. We know that we are back up above the 50 day. That is something that is bullish for us. And of course, we're up above the 200 day, also bullish. The RSI in the weekly crossed above 50. The RSI in the daily way above 50. Not to the point where we're overbought yet on this one. We are heading that way, but I still think that there's room to the top side of this. Should we get good news throughout the week or should the market end up shaking off all the different news that we have coming up? We'll see if the momentum is something that overpowers what we get from the economic reports that are out there are things that are happening in the economy surrounding the, the markets that we have. If you guys want to see how I'm playing this market, you do so through the Patreon. That link is down in the description. I post my buys and sells through the Discord that's available over there as well. And you can also be a member of my community as well. And then also the options course that I have that I'm building out over there right now portfolios amplified. You can learn how to amplify your portfolio through the power of options. And you can also get free stocks through Moomoo, which has just recently dropped their commission fees on options trading down to zero from 65 cents. That's huge. You have those trades for free on Moomoo. And then you also have down here, your deposit levels for the free stocks and check this out the cash sweep vehicle any unused cash that you have sitting in your account now draws a 5.1 percent percentage yield on this so a pretty sweet deal coming from moo moo all right let's get back to the charts on this so what we're looking at now is qqq there we are so the q's Wonderful week for us. Really strong day on Friday. Lots of inflows of capital into the markets. Lots of momentum. Are the technicals going to overtake the economy? Well, we're going to have to watch and see just where the top of this thing is. Now, whether it's the SPY or the Qs, we made a higher high with this current week, especially with that strong close on Friday. That can be very bullish for the markets. We have a lot of bullish signals between what we see in the momentum, between what we see with the higher high coming in here, being up above the 200 day and the 50 day. Those are both very excellent signs. What we need to see is where exactly we top out on this thing, where we find that resistance finally settling in. And then the next thing that we really want to see is getting a higher low put in as well to confirm that we're moving in a bullish direction on this one. So, so should we start to sell off? Find Find out where that low price is and then bounce from there. That could be very good for markets as long as it's a, a higher low than what we had previously. And I think that Moody's will have to see how that affects the markets. I think with inflation reports, if those continue to be at least okay, they don't necessarily have to be great. However, if they're going to be absolutely atrocious and awful for us that we get some significantly higher numbers, that could be something that could maybe possibly change the outlook or the momentum that we have right now. I do think that the inflation reports that we get for November and December 
in, in December and January coming up are really going to be the determinants for what we see in the markets. So what do I see for this market coming up this next week? I think we do see some downward pressure at least early on in the week. And we're going to have to see what the market price is in for the Moody's news. And we're also going to have to see what the market price is in for the potential government shutdown, which I think would be late in the week pressure. I think the early week pressure comes from consumer inflation expectations and from inflation reports themselves. So we're going to have to watch those. I think CPI is going to be huge this month. I think PPI is going to be huge this month. And then I think depending on what we see from there, that can really start to put the eyes out towards what we get for the, the next reports that we have happening. So I think that this week could give us a little bit of that softness early on, and it's possible that we end up on another high note. If we do end up selling off throughout the entire week, and then it becomes an important question of where exactly do we find bottom, I think that we're going to put in a higher low, and I think that's going to confirm a bullish trend upward throughout the rest of November, assuming that geopolitical tensions don't really change on us, assuming that we don't get absolutely roasted by inflation, assuming that the government shutdown doesn't happen, and assuming that the credit rating even though it hasn't changed right now, but that outlook being switched to negative isn't necessarily something that's too strong of a negative catalyst. I do think that it is downward pressure. I don't think it's enough to turn the market around and make it bearish throughout the, the month of November all by itself. So those are my thoughts for the market coming up. I think that we see some softness, maybe a little bit of selling, but if we do, it's all about where that bottom comes in. Thank you guys for watching this video. Check out the link for the Patreon. Come on over and join the community. Check out my buys and sells. Don't forget about your free stocks from Moomoo. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education. Remember, my friends, that learning is earning, and we'll see you in the next video.